There are five major ocean garbage patches with 269,000 tons of plastic in our world oceans. Humans throw 8 million tons of garbage into the ocean annually. What are we going to do about that? Down to your luck, lost to drive in the ride. You were settling up, and I remember when mom used to pet me at lunch. The preparation made me ask, Am I having enough? Cause when you ask, now you have not. Scooters on a back block, fell and scraped my knee. I left my ego on the blacktop, and honestly, it never damaged my practice. My faith had been a few to truly keep me alive through the dark days, hard times, dealing with some issues. I was scared to admit, I pretend they wasn't there and said they failed to exist until it all hit the fan. Now, before I begin, I want to get some terminology out of the way so I don't have to sidetrack to explain things. Gyres are circular currents that are driven by wind, tide, salinity, and temperature in our oceans. Centripetal force is a force that acts on a body moving in a circular path and is directed towards the center around that moving path. Microplastics are the most prevalent marine debris in our oceans, measuring less than 5 millimeters in length. Biomagnification is an increase of the concentration of a chemical when going up the food chain. Trophic level is a hierarchical level in an ecosystem that is comprised of organisms that share the same function in the food web. Now going back to the gyres so I can speak more in depth about them, there are five major ocean gyres. North and South Atlantic, North and South Pacific, and the Indian subtropical gyres. Gyres in the Northern Hemisphere rotate clockwise. In the North Atlantic, they go up the east coast of America, traveling over to Europe, back down to Africa, and then along the equator back to North America. Gyres in the Southern Hemisphere rotate counterclockwise. In the South Pacific, they travel up South America, along the equator, back down past Australia, and then back to South America along the Southern Ocean. Our oceans are notorious for collecting trash. However, the garbage patches are different than typical pollution. They're caused by trash following ocean gyres. The centripetal force of the gyre forces the garbage in large collection into the center of the gyre. Garbage patches are found in three major oceans, the Pacific, the Atlantic, and the Indian. There are two in the Pacific between California and Japan, and between Australia and South America. There are two in the Atlantic between North America and Europe, and between South America and Africa. There is one garbage patch in the Indian Ocean between Africa and Indonesia. The largest of these garbage patches is located in the northern Pacific Ocean between Hawaii and California. Scientists have compared its size to the state of Alaska or Texas. This particular patch was discovered by Charles Moore in 1997 when he was competing in a yacht race across the Pacific. It was theorized that something of this nature existed since the late 1980s. However, it remained undiscovered until Moore sailed through it. This patch raised public awareness in 2006 with a Pulitzer Prize winning LA Times series about it, stating more than 87,000 tons of plastic are floating inside the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a figure up to 16 times higher than previously estimated. Most times these garbage patches are made up of microplastics rather than large items of trash. This is a really clean beach and yet wherever you go you find plastic. Plastic gets into the marine environment. It breaks down into tiny little pieces called microplastics and anything that eats in the ocean will, will inadvertently eat plastic. Like I said, microplastics measure less than five millimeters in length. Instead of a large island of plastic, it forms more of a cloudy soup of microplastics. Recently, oceanographers discovered that around 70% of the marine debris that forms these patches actually sinks to the bottom. So what we see on the surface is around 30% of what is actually present. The places where the trash accumulates is more of a loose collection of trash that floats together due to the centripetal force of the gyre rather than a floating island in the ocean. The worst of these garbage patches is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch located between Japan and California. Researchers who study this patch struggle calculating its exact size because of the fluidity of these garbage patches. Scientists are able to break the patch into three distinct sections, the western patch, located between Indonesia and Japan, the eastern patch, located between Hawaii and California, and the subtropical convergent zone, which is located between the western patch and the eastern patch. These patches are comprised of garbage from ships, oil platforms, and ocean river ports, 54% of which coming from land activity from North America and Asia. 
20% stems from sea-based activities and 27 come from an unidentified source. They contain any type of plastic or trash with a slow decomposition rate. Examples of these slow decomposing items are styrofoam, which takes 50 years, plastic bags, which take 20 years, aluminum cans take 200 years, plastic bottles take 450 years, and fishing line takes 600 years. Glass is currently undetermined. These items are usually light and float, however, with a multitude of plastic items being piled on top of each other, the heavier items sink below the lighter items. Scientists have discovered that in the deepest parts, these patches can reach 33 feet deep. Estimates show that the Pacific Ocean alone, there are around 100 tons of trash floating on the surface. This is not counting the ones that sink. The large amount of trash in the ocean not only affects wild organisms, but also humans. This trash cannot be digested when an organism eats it, meaning it just stays in the organism's gut until it dies of starvation or poisoning. The organisms that ingest this trash directly would be birds, whales, and small fish. The trash infects higher in the food chain due to predation. When an organism consumes something that has already fed on plastic, that organism ingests the plastic. As these plastics move up the food chain, they steadily increase in concentration. As a chemical moves up the food chain, it increases in concentration because each trophic level has to consume more than the trophic level below it. This is what we call biomagnification. This phenomenon is very dangerous to humans because we're at the top of the food chain. As of 2011, we consume 154 tons of seafood per year. From the seafood, we consume 11,000 pieces of microplastics per year. A 2009 study shows that plastic does not decompose in the ocean due to rain and sun. However, as they decompose, it releases different chemicals that can be detected in the parts per million range. These chemicals not only leach into the water column, but also inside marine life. Dr. Sadio of College of Pharmacy Nihon University in China stated that his research showed that when plastic decomposes, it releases bisphenthal, BPA, and PS oil gomer into the water column. He noted that when organisms eat plastics, they do not decompose, but however, they still leach these dangerous chemicals into the organism. Scientists are concerned because BPA and PS oil gomer can disrupt the functions of hormones and reproductive systems. There are a multitude of organizations that are working on cleaning the ocean of trash. The Ocean Cleanup is a company that mainly focuses on cleaning up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. They have different concepts for their cleanup device spanning from 2012. The latest concept came in 2019, which is an alteration of their first deployed vessel. Concept 001 was deployed into the Pacific Ocean in 2018 for a few months until it was taken ashore for repairs and adaptations. System 001B is a floating system containing a floating system, a skirt underneath the system to prevent trash from escaping, and a cork line atop the structure to prevent overtopping. It is a passive system that uses wind, waves, and ocean currents for traversing the ocean. It has a countering sea anchor to slow the system for maximum trash collection. The system navigates the ocean for extended periods of time. It sends a notification to a command system when full. This way, a vessel comes to the system to empty it. System 001B was deployed in 2019 for testing. However, it was ended for alterations. The Ocean Cleanup has begun working on System 002 and hopefully will be unveiling it soon. The Ocean Cleanup has plans to remove 50% of the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in just five years once these systems become fully active. The Ocean Cleanup also has river cleanup systems underway using what they call the Interceptor. Rivers are the main source of plastic pollution to the sea, supplying around 95% of ocean plastic. Ten rivers around the world supplying 90% of river-derived ocean plastic. The World Economic Forum states that the five highest polluted rivers are the Yangtze, which produces 1.5 million tons of plastic per year. It is 6,300 kilometers long with more than 400 million people living along it. The Indus is the second highest offender because it flows through India and Pakistan, which supports millions of people. The Yellow River is the third highest because it is one of China's major river systems. It's been said that 30% of the fish species that lived in this river have disappeared due to the pollution. The Hai is the fourth highest because it flows through Tianjin and Beijing, two highly populated cities in China, and the Nile is the fifth highest 
as it is the world's largest river flowing through 11 countries with 360 million people living along it. It has been stated that the reason these rivers have high pollution rates is because they have high populations living among them with poor waste management systems. The Ocean Cleanup's interceptor is a conveyor belt system leading into a dumpster. It entails two barrier systems that feed the trash into the mouth of the system. At the mouth, there's a conveyor belt that carries the trash up to a shuttle. This shuttle distributes the trash among six dumpsters inside the system. Once the dumpsters are full, it sends a notification to the command center and the dumpsters are emptied. These interceptors can collect 50,000 kilograms of per day and the ocean cleanup plans to have these systems placed in a thousand rivers by 2025. For Ocean is another organization that is working towards cleaning our oceans from plastic pollution. They have bases in Haiti, Indonesia, Bali, Florida, and Guatemala. They work to collect ocean plastic from both sea and rivers. They have booms that are portable plastic collecting devices that they place in river mounts. Since 2017, they have pulled 8,613,000 pounds of plastic from our oceans. Four Oceans operates by people purchasing bracelets and different items from the organization. They take this money to fund their operations. Each bracelet that is bought funds the pull of one pound of plastic from the ocean. If you are interested in either of these organizations, their websites will be in the description. In a perfect world, as a population, we should follow strict guidelines for recycling plastic and fund different nonprofits to help clean garbage patches and coastline pollution. However, due to the capitalistic nature of this world, this may not be 100% possible. Large populous cities like Tokyo may have found different ways to use the abundant plastic in the ocean towards their infrastructure. Tokyo is one of the largest metropolitan areas in the world. They have used some of the plastic in the Tokyo Bay to create a man-made island. Their sea surface disposal site is a dumping site for the 20 million people living in Tokyo. This island is 30 meters deep, consisting solely of the ash from garbage, pulverized trash, and topsoil. This island is broken up into four parts, and the oldest part is set to open after the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Something similar to this can be seen in Dubai, when they made a man-made massive island in the Persian Gulf called the Palm Islands. This island is 23.30 square miles and is made completely of rock, sand, and limestone. These two are examples of human ingenuity in the face of issues. Now, it can be stated that in 50 years, the Japanese government has stated that they will not be able to construct any more trash islands. The Palm Islands have already shown massive environmental concerns. They have a huge issue with erosion. This construction has damaged the marine ecology in this area damaging reef systems, they have loss of fish, and they have seen damage to the reproductive cycles of some fish species. If humans continue to explore this route, what are the consequences for marine life in the future? How will it affect ocean currents and nutrient transfer? It is imperative that we begin to think more about our waste management and dispersal. We need to spend more time cleaning our oceans because the chemicals and pollutants affect just about every organism that uses the ocean for life. It is a huge issue that needs to be fixed very, very quickly. I hope we get together and fix this issue because if it keeps growing, we won't be able to reverse the effect.